so today we're going to look at section 6.5, which is exponential growth and decay. And the first thing we're going to look at is the definition and the derivative of an exponential function. So the first part is your exponential function. The second part is your derivative of your exponential function. Okay, so for my exponential function, y of t equals some constant e to the kt, where c and k are both constants, then my derivative of that function, y prime of t, is y of 0, so your function at 0, times e k to, to the kt. Okay, so that's the function we're going to use to estimate exponential growth. So if I look at example 1, I'm estimating population growth for the world. So for the world, we're given that in 1950, there were approximately 2,560 million people. And in 1960, there were approximately 3,040 million people. And we need to know what our population was in 1993 and what we estimate the population to be in 2020. Okay, so we're going to use the function y of 0 equals ek to the v to the kt. And so if I let 1950 be equal to year 0, then that tells me that my y of 0 is going to be 2,560. So my population at year 0 is 2,560 million people. So if I start with plugging that stuff in, then I know that y prime of 0 is equal to the 2,560 million people that were there. So let's do 2,560 times e k to the 0. Okay, which ends up canceling out our k. So unfortunately, year 0 gives me no information. Because what I'm trying to find is my k, so I know my equation. So then if I look at year 1960, what would my time be in 1960 then if I set 1950 equal to 0? How many years passed from 1950 to 1960? 10. So my new time is 10, which tells me that my y of 10 is equal to 3,040 people. So if I use y prime of 10, well, my y of 0 is still 2,560 people. My e still stays e, my k stays k, but my new time is 10. And we know that that whole function equals 3,040 million people when everything's said and done. So we're going to solve for k. So if I simplify this, it becomes 2,560e to the 10k equals 3,040. What do you think we need to do next to try to get the k by itself? Any guesses? Divide. Okay, we're going to divide by 2,560. And what is 3,040 divided by 2,560? 1.875. Okay, so 1.1875. Alright, and how do we get rid of an E? Um, how do we get rid of a base E? Natural log. natural log, so I'm going to take the natural log of each side, so those cancel, so we get 10k equals natural log of 
eight, seven, five. Divide that. And then divide that by ten. So what is that approximately? Zero one. I mean, point zero one seven. Zero one seven two. Okay. So k equals approximately zero point zero one seven two, which tells me that this is a percent that my population is growing approximately one point seven percent per year. That's what that means. So now we're going to estimate our next few years. So I'm asked to find nineteen forty three. And 2020. What's going to be my time in 1943 if I, my time was zero in 1950? It's going to be 33. How many years passed from 1950 to 1993? 43. Okay. So my time is going to be 43. And 2020? 70. Okay, so now I have all of my necessary information using the equation 2560e to the, I now know that my k is 0 0.0172, and I can start with the fact that my first time is 43 years. And my second time is 70 years. OK, so let's start by simplifying with 0 0.0172 times 43. 0 0.73 negatives. OK, so 0 0.7396. And then what is 2,560 times e to the 0 0.7396? Oh, 53.463.4. Okay, so I'll round it off because we can't have 0.45 numbers of people. So 5,363 million people in the year 1993. And let's figure out then approximately how many people we think will be in this world in 2020. So in like four years. So zero point, what is 0 0.0172 times 70? 1.204. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's 2,560 times e to the 1.204? So, in approximately 2020, there would be 8,534 million people in the world. So, does that make sense how I got my K and then found my other next years? We're going to do the same thing by looking at the half-life of a, a chemical. So we use half-lives a lot in chemistry and in physics to determine when a function becomes half of its original mass. So we're going to look at radium 226. And we know that 
the half-life of radium-226 is approximately 1,590 years. So I'm going to let that be my initial time for my equation. Okay, and then I know that I'm given 1,000 milligrams of that. So I'm going to let that be what I start with at time zero. Okay, so <clears throat> at time zero I'm given 100 milligrams, and I need to figure out how many milligrams would be left after a thousand years, and figure out what happens if I start with 30 milligrams instead of 100 milligrams. So first I have to find is my k. So if my y of zero is 100, then I get 100 times e to the t, which is 1590 times some time, and I'm going to set that equal to my initial half-life since my time was zero, and half of 100 is going to leave me with 50 milligrams. Oh, this is supposed to be a K. Okay. okay, so if I start then by solving that, if I divide by 100, so E to the 1590 K equals 50 divided by 100 is 0 0.5. How do I get rid of an E? Drug. So I get 1590 K equals the natural log of 0 0.5. Divided by 1,590. And so approximately what is the natural log of 0 0.5 divided by 1,590? Negative 4.36. So k okay, would equal approximately negative 4.36 which makes sense because we're talking about half-life, so we know that our quantities are going down, not going up. So it makes sense that it's negative. So then if I look at my initial function, then my y of 0 is 100. E to the k, which is negative 4.36, and I'm going to be looking at some different times. So that's my initial exponential growth or decay function. In this case, decay because we're going down. Now I need to figure out what's going to happen when I'm going to what's going to happen after a thousand years. So I'm going to plug in a thousand for my t because my new time is a thousand years. Okay, what's negative 4.36 times 1,000? Okay, so negative 4,360. Okay, so after 1,000 years, what's 100 times e to the negative 4,360? Zero. You don't get a decimal, it's just zero. You should get a decimal. Unless it's just like a really, really, really small number. Is all that zero? Not what I was expecting, but all right. So after a thousand years, you would have zero milligrams of uranium-226 left. Then it asks us when it's going to actually equal uh, 30 milligrams. So if I start with 100, I want to know when that's actually an equal 30, so I need to solve for T. So if I want to know a certain number of milligrams, I set it equal to that. How do I start solving for t? Divide by 100. Okay, 
and 30 divided by 100 is 0 0.3. What do I do next? Take the natural log of each side. So I get negative 4.36t equals natural log of 0 0.3. And what? I divide by negative 4.36. So it's natural log of 0 0.3 divided by negative 4.36. What was it? 0 0.276. So it wouldn't take very long. It would only take 0 0.276 years. So only basically like four months, a little more than four months, for that radium to go from 100 milligrams to 30 milligrams. Just one more. given that I'm going to put, I'm going to look at Newton's law of cooling. So if I put a soda in my fridge and my soda starts out at room temperature, so it's been sitting on my desk for a while, it starts out at 72 degrees. I have my fridge set at 44 degrees. I'm going to figure out how quickly my fridge is cooling it. So I know that after a half an hour, the new temperature of my soda is 61 degrees. So it's gone down 11 degrees. So I need to figure out what the exponential growth rate is until my soda is actually going to be the same temperature as my fridge. So the first thing I need to find, then, is my y of 0. And my y of 0 is equal to what my temperature started at minus what my fridge is set at. So what is 72 minus 44? 28. So I know then that my equation is equal to 28 e to the k times my t, which in this case was one half. And I'm going to set that equal to the temperature that I am trying to get. So in this case, I know that after 30 minutes, my temperature is 61, so I'm going to set that equal to the 61 my temperature was currently at after a half an hour's worth of time. And I'm going to solve that for k. So, so I'm going to start by dividing by 28. What's 61 divided by 28? 2.179. Okay, what do I do next to get rid of the E? Natural log. Natural log. So I get 1 half K equals natural log of 2.179. And then to get rid of my 1 half, I'm going to multiply by 2. So take both sides times 2. And so what is 2 times the natural log of 2.179? Approximately 1.158. So that tells me that my equation at any time gives me 28 times e 
to the 1.558t. That's going to be my initial exponential decay function. So I want to figure out when that function is going to be the same temperature as my fridge, when my soda is going to cool to exactly the same temperature as the fridge. So my fridge is 48, so we're going to set it equal to 48 to figure out exactly when my soda is going to be the temperature I want it to be. So if I divide by 28, what's 48 divided by 28? 1.571. Okay. Then I take my natural log. So I get 1.558t equals the natural log 1.571. I divide by 1.558. And so what is the natural log of 1.571 divided by 1.558? Zero. Zero. So it approximately... 2.90 hours in my fridge. My soda would cool to 44 degrees. So basically almost three hours I would have to wait before I could drink my soda if I just had it sitting on my desk and put it in my fridge and wanted it to get cold. Okay. So we're going to look at a few different exponential growth and decay functions dealing with Newton's law of cooling, dealing with population growth, and dealing with half-lives of different chemicals. So you're going to do page 451, 1 through 6, and 8, and 9.